What's up guys, welcome to the last video of the setting up C-Sharp NeoVim series, if you will. Last time I promised you formatting C-Sharp and NeoVim. This is what you're gonna get today. We're gonna use C-Sharp here as a CLI tool for formatting code. We're gonna use conform NVim to integrate C-Sharp here into NeoVim. We're gonna talk about the editor config and what that is in the first place. We're gonna talk about formatting C-Sharp as well as Razor code and the limitations attached to that. And don't worry, I'm gonna explain everything to you. I'm gonna walk you through the full process of setting everything up. So relax, you know, and lean back and get something to drink, whatever you need. And let's jump into the topic. This is four points. First thing, we need a set of rules on how we want the formatting to look like. Number two is we need an executable that applies these rules on our text that we want to format. Number three is we need Lua code to integrate this executable that gives us the formatting somehow. And then of course, as a last point, we need a key mapping in the OVM to get the formatting done in the current buffer, okay? Once we have those four things, four things, we're good to go. Talking about the first thing, a set of rules on how we want the formatting to look like. The editor config is a concept that allows you to have one file that contains all the rules for your formatting and no matter what people you have in your team and what editors they work with, they will have consistent formatting independently from the IDE. At least that is the idea. I'm gonna check out in a second how this actually works, okay? The next thing is the executable. And what you can have in .NET is, is .NET format, but there's actually a problem with that. I'm not gonna demonstrate in a second. And now when we use .NET format like so, .NET format, it takes a while. Then it's doing something, then it's done. And I close the file, open it again, program, and you see the spaces have disappeared and now everything looks fine, right? Cool. But now, if I, if I say I have a long line, which I can do like so, right? I have, this is one long line now, right? And now once I look into the editor config and I see max line length 50, which is very, very small, I expect everything to be organized vertically, right? It's nice, vertically, hello world, hello world, etc. But as we're gonna see in a second, I do the format again, open the file again, nothing happened. Nothing happened. In fact, this property right here, max line length of the editor config is ignored by .NET format and any LSP. It's just ignored. <laughs> max line length will not be fixed once you do formatting over your code if you use .NET format or an LSP. So I have this right here. There's actually a long running issue. You can open that and read through that if you're interested. And interesting is the second point here. .NET format simply ignores max line length. So JetBrains Writer, VS Code, Visual Studio, all have their individual implementations for this. So when you have three people in your team and one uses Writer and one uses VS Code and one uses Visual Studio, constantly you're gonna have potential merge conflicts just because of formatting, because everyone has his own little implementation of the max line length. So what do we even do now if we use something else? This is where C-Sharper comes in and this is the executable of our choice, okay? So now I go to the next point, correct editor config formatting with C-Sharp here. And it's actually quite easy. Now near when we just go and say Mason install C-Sharp here, I go into my fresh configuration and I do Mason install C-Sharp here, boom, C-Sharp here installed, good. And now the next thing in the tutorial that I just wrote, in order for C-Sharp to work, make sure the latest .NET is installed. Right now, this is the 900305. And if you don't do that, you later will get the no frameworks found error, right? Which look, looks like so. And we want to avoid that. That's why we install the latest version. In my recent setting up C-Sharp for NeoVim video, I mentioned how to install the latest .NET. You can check this out here when you click on this link, or you just copy this whole thing right here, and this will download the .NET install sh script, and it will then install the script with the latest .NET version. So I just copy this whole thing, go into my container, install everything, and now I have the latest.NET installed. Next point in the tutorial. So remember when I said we need Lua code to integrate that executable C-Sharp here into NeoVim. That Lua code 
is conform.nvim and we have it down here. So what is conform.nvim? Open the website and it says conform.nvim is a lightweight yet powerful formatter plugin for NeoVim. What does it mean? It means that conform is the Lua glue that connects the formatter with the currently opened NeoVim buffer. So NVChat, which we all installed, I suppose, comes naturally with conform.nvim and inside your plugins in it Lua, you somewhere have the conform.nvim lazy vim installation for that. If I go back into my container, I think I have to navigate back into configs and then yeah, I do boom, 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 open NeoVim, open plugins, in it Lua. And there you go. This is per default. When you install the NVChat starter pack, you get this out of the box. This is conform. And the way to configure this is in the conform, see that conform.lua. And this is how it looks vanilla. Nothing inside. Now we're going to set up conform for C sharp. And it goes like this. We already opened the conform Lua. And I copy this text right here and explain everything later. Okay. So I go. Paste this right here. And now line by line, the options. Async true means NeoVim is not blocked while conform is active. Now you have the formatters by FT section. By FT means by file type. So for .cs, you have a certain formatter and for .cs project, you have a certain formatter. And for all the rest, conform defaults to the LSP formatting. I will explain that later. So for now, as you see, for .cs files, we have to see sharpier underscore Rambo formatters. And I deliberately named that underscore Rambo. So you see, this is a name that you can choose. What you have to do is in the formatter section, you configure formatters as you're liking. So for now, we have to C sharp here underscore Rambo, which is says we want to use C sharp here for formatting with those arguments and we want to use it with standard in. We're going to tell conform to use the text from the open buffer that we have right here. And then we want to use C sharp here as a formatter and we're going to tell C sharp here to write the formatting result into standard out. And standard in and standard out are like containers, locations in the current process that different CLIs and different tools have access to, like a shared space for different tools. Conform is feeding C-sharp here from standard in and it's collecting the result from standard out. And that is why we have to set it up in this way. If we wouldn't do that, and here we would not use standard in, C-sharp here would just format the file itself without us noticing it in the current buffer. The buffer would look the same, while the file is already formatted. We want to see it in the buffer right away. That is why we use conform this exact way right here, okay? Next thing on the list, formatting the current buffer. So in a VChat, you have the default key map for formatting that looks like so, it's leader FM, and you can find a list of all the other key maps that are in there by default under this link right here, okay? And now I do believe since we set up C Sharp here already, I can go back to my C Sharp project, load everything, of course, open program CS. And there we go with leader FM. We have proper nice formatting by applying C Sharp here. And we can check this with conform info. See that? That says C Sharp your Rambo configuration is active for C Sharp and CS proj files. Exactly what we wanted. Now, of course, that was only the formatting of c -sharp files. What if we have Razor? So unfortunately, .NET format and Prettier both do not apply to Razor files. So we have to rely on the LSP for formatting back to my container. Opening new them right here. Looking for counter Razor or something. And now usually when we look back at the configuration of conform, we don't have any Razor files set up right here. So in this case, when we have file extensions that are not handled by conform, it falls back to the LSP formatting. A lot of LSPs come with formatting right away. Razor is not mentioned here. Therefore, I would expect I get some basic formatting, but I don't. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't. And this is because 
is actually right here. When we have a look at the Razor formatting dependencies on Mansion on GitHub, then you see you must install the following plugins. Number one is the Rose and number two is HTML LSP for completions and formatting. So by installing this LSP, we should be good. Go back into my new configuration, do a Mason install HTML LSP. It's gonna be installed, boom. Go back, open it, go to counter, destroy the formatting once more. And now when I try to format, we get the formatting for the HTML LSP, not the Razor LSP. Good enough for me at the moment. So what did we accomplish so far? For our set of rules, we have the editor config, done. For our executable, we have C-sharp here, done. For the Lua code to integrate the executable, we have conform, cool. And for the key mapping, we have leader FM. I have an unfortunately section right here, and it says HTML LSP itself does not expose the setting to wrap attributes vertically. What I mean is, when you have a button like this, and you have the attributes horizontally, in the horizontal line, that becomes ugly quick. It would be nicer to have this nice little vertical formatting right here, which you get typically when you use something like Rider. That would be nice. So there is a plugin that can potentially do that, but when I go to that plugin, which is called Christina Plus Plus Prettier Plugin Razor doop de doo uh, it's not well documented and the last commit has been four years ago. So this is not really an option for me. So what else can we do about that? So I put a section here that says, but maybe there is some hope. And I say, maybe, maybe there is some hope because we get something we get from JetBrains, the resharper command line tools. When I open this page, this is a set of tools that you can use independently from your operating system or whatever you're coding with. It's just CLIs, right? And you install them like so, and what it gives you, it gives you a, where is that? A JB for JetBrains, I suppose, command, where it can then use JB inspect code or cleanup code. We are looking for cleanup code. And with JB cleanup code, you would get the formatting as you would get it from actual writer. And this is nice because if I go to the other link, this one, then you see down there that we actually have Razor as a supported language. So that is nice. But also, unfortunately, it comes with some downsides. So potentially it's very slow because it doesn't only do the formatting of the text. It also checks for dependencies and packages and like all this stuff. There's a lot of things happening in the background. And the other downside is it works on the file directly. We don't have standard in and standard out. That means we have very little opportunity here to manipulate the buffer that we have open in the current window. You have to get creative when you want to use that and you have to see if it's actually worth getting creative because it might be too slow anyways. For C Sharp, I'm fine with C Sharp here. For me, it works very well, but for Razor, there is room for improvement. There might be a part two of this video once I figured out how to make this thing right here work. But for now, that's it. So when we go back to the debriefing area of the actually improved configuration, then you see that we ticked off those two already. Today, we ticked off formatting with conformancy sharpier, boom. And now from here on, it's actually gonna be fun because that is the content that will enable you to finally step away from IDEs and use Vim in the terminal as your editor. Now, I don't know about you, but this one right here, super exciting. I'm super hyped about this because this is the secret sauce. This is what's missing. Once you have this, you're going to be able to completely throw away Rider, Visual Studio, Visual Studio. You don't going to need this anymore because with this, you're going to be so much faster than you used to with so much less effort. And I'm excited to share that with you. So stay tuned. If you're not subscribed to this channel, subscribe to this channel. It's going to be sick. Okay. So all of you, a great week. Bye-bye.